We are now actually officially recording. What's the name of this podcast? The name of this podcast is... Now let's begin the story. Uh, H-Town's finest, 16 Shots Podcast. I'm lightning with the blame, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is us. It is us. It is your favorite podcasters, podcasters, elite podcasting coming out of H-Town, Texas. Young James Boogie, AR Dub. We are 16 Shots Podcast. What's up, what's up, what's up, man? How was this Saturday? Chilling, going? chilling, chilling, man. It was a weird Saturday. It was a very extremely busy Saturday for me on a normally non, you know, busy day. I was pretty busy. You said busy too many times, man. You got to edit all our busies out. They're going to think we're talking about busy bone. No, 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 no. We're not speaking in tongues or anything like that, so, you know. You will not deface, you will not deface, defame, or talk down on busy bone in my presence. Um, which one? Which one of them niggas pulled out the old Jumanji shotgun? Doesn't matter, because that's They're the one I don't want to smoke with. Anybody who will shoot you with an elephant gun, you definitely don't want no smoke with that nigga, man. Nigga had an elephant gun. The gun that uh, the hunter had on Jumanji. That's what he threatened to shoot the Migos with. And so he's showing how intelligent he's like, bro. Why would I shoot one time? Shoot one time for each one of y'all. I could shoot one time and get out, y'all. That real stay ass gun won't gonna shoot nobody, bro. Those stay ass beater. Those stay ass beater. I ain't heard from the baby in a while, man. He gotta lay low, bro. Let me check on the baby, man. Let me check on the baby, see what's going on with him, man. You got his number? Pause. I just asked. You said you was gonna check on the baby. I just asked if you had his number, man. I didn't say we need to check on the baby as a culture. Oh, as a culture, I think Fifty got him, bro. I think Fifty got him like a a dust ass Adidas deal. Uh, he, he, he's still on Rolling Loud, performing him and, and Travis Scott. Did they what? confirm Travis Scott coming back on Rolling Loud? I know they was trying to test the waters. Is it confirmed? I'm glad you said Travis Scott because I've dedicated 2022 to be my year of the hate, and Travis Scott Travis Scott is not a good. Rapper, so all. let's get it straight. 2022, the 16 Shots podcast, at least one half of the pod casting talent, is gonna be hating all year. Hate, hating all year. I got into it with another rapper another recently rapper. T- today. Oh, with a rapper, with a rapper. Do I know this rapper? Uh, I doubt it. Um, I, I should. Look up his information to be particular about it. Not, I will, and I'll give him a chance to come. But he posted something about pigeons being fake, and all the pigeons we see are really clones, or not clones, but whatever. Wait, wait, I, wait, 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 wait. Brothers going too far. <laughs> <laughs> so this nigga says. Pigeons, pigeons are fake. So is he one of these conspiracy theorists where he says that pigeon, pigeons are, are are not real? They're computer programs and they're glitches, or mm-hmm. he's saying that they're real but they're clones of other birds? No, they're, they're whatever they are. They're not real because you know they have a, a mark and they put on pigeons that you can see with the ultralight, the ultralight uh, when they mark pigeons. You know what I mean? When they mark any animal that they release to the wild. They have a mark that you can see with the ultra with the with the um black light or whatever. All this is new technology to me. I mean, I get the black light and the marking technology. Didn't know they used it to track just everyday pigeons. I thought well, they would they're, use they're probably not everyday pigeons. They're probably pigeons that have a purpose. Whether they're trying to track the flight to the pigeon so they can, you know, because un- unbeknownst to regular mofo everything in the ecosystem has a repercussion. So knowing what the pigeons flight patterns do can help them, whether it be with um, the, uh, the TSA, with the flight plan, flight plans, or whether it be agriculturally, all yeah, these yeah, things, yeah. you know. I mean, I know they do that. So I know definitely that they use how birds fly to set up like, like a flight, flight paths. Like I know it's not random like to say, oh, I'm flying to New York. 
and they just go up there and go. Like it's like almost like little highways and jet streams they catch. So I get that. And I know yeah. they probably got that info from flying animals. Um Yeah, but pigeons are fake. That's a that's a that's a new one. I know a but, nigga I I know of a nigga in Houston who hmm. like flies pigeons. Like homie really has a pigeon coop in his backyard. Like Mike Tyson. Yeah, like I knew that was a, 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 I knew that was a thing like in New York. I didn't know it, it was that much of a thing in the South. But apparently, homie does this. I don't think he's from the South. Yeah, it's pitting three cut. It like took me, you know, they calm him down and they make him feel that. Wow, I was trying to figure out how they race them hoes. Like, you know, I get it. You can race anything. You can race turtles. You can race pigeons. But anyway, this this is not where it went. That that sounds like that would be the end of it. Like that would be the extremity to it. Yeah. But no, so I say, I say, because I love my people, I say, you are the reason why people think rappers are stupid. <laughs> why you tell that man and shit, bro? Because I mean, honestly, that's his opinion. And he might be an extremely educated, smart person. And he might just be overthinking uh, the science behind pigeons by saying okay. that they're not real and they're clones. So it doesn't and make him, it doesn't make him stupid because he has that take. It's just a wild take to have. So then he replied by, and you know what? You could be right. But when he replied, he said, have you ever seen a baby pigeon? Hmm. And I said, bro, do you hang out in trees? Now, now, I will say I've never seen a baby pigeon. Do you hang out in trees? But I also will say I do not hang out in trees. So I'm like this, this like the, the logic that goes into putting at one and two together does not equal three, man. If if that's <laughs> if that's the sole logic he's basing this off of, I can understand your take because there are a lot of shit we don't see the baby of. I mean, I don't you know, I've seen I've seen nests in the trees when I was a kid and I would climb them. I've seen a nest fall out of the tree with an egg in it. I go to the grocery store and eat baby chickens for breakfast. So I, I know that that's a thing. What came first, the, the, the chicken or the bird? What came You've first, asked the several times or the egg? You know, we've, we've talked about this several times, and I told you, out the sludge, amphibious creatures turn into to, to, to non-amphibious creatures, which means the creature that was amphib that was the non-amphibious creature came first. or Evolved and grew feathers and then laid an egg. No, what I'm saying is you could say that the, I don't know, that's a great question, man. There's, there's, there's no answer, bro, because you can say on one end that the amphibious creature laid the egg and the egg came out of chicken or mm. it evolved. In, like, how, how much do you know about evolution, like the actual ticks and tones, of it, like the, 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 fine, the finer points of evolution? I don't know the finer points. I know everything evolves, DNA mutates. Um, I know shit like, uh, if you are a person who's migrated to the coldest of coldest areas in the world and you reproduce and shit like that in that area, eventually uh, that person will will have some sort of mutation, if that's the correct word, which I don't think it is, that will make them um, more tolerant to set climate and conditions. So what does it take, though? I, I feel like that takes... A couple of, you know, like a couple of, couple of. And when I, like I say that, when I say a couple, I like I, you said, I like how you did that. The couple, a couple. Of, yeah, like, I don't. I don't think it's like like who, who you know, maybe uh, you know, twenty years. Nah, I think it's like you know, some some some, some you know some some well, time since we, lapses. Since we in now, I'm a, I'm gonna end what I was talking about and go what you were talking about. It ended with me saying I apologize to him. I said, you know, I shouldn't have went you like that, bro. Send me some of your music so I can buy some. I don't think you should apologize because this man told you, and I'm assuming it's a man. If this yeah. man, I was riding with him. I was in the car with him. Mm-hmm. And so you told me, he said, uh, have you ever seen a pigeon egg? Mm-mm. And at that point, I was like, nah, hey, you tripping. Have you ever seen a baby pigeon? He said, have you, oh, ever, have seen you ever seen a baby pigeon? pigeon? Yeah. Nah. Before, no. before I could answer, somebody else said it took me less than a minute. And he showed a picture of baby pigeons. So, I mean, it wasn't just me, but me, like I said, let me, let me, let me, let me, 
get you. I'm, I want to say his name. I'm going to bite him on the, on the show probably sooner or later. Don't but, say his uh, name uh, if you lead him with hate. No, I'm leading with love, man. I told you I apologize to oh, the dude okay. and, and bought some of his music. Then he punks you to buy his music? What if it all was a ploy to get you to feel sorry for him and buy his music? No, nah, he you know I knew he was a rapper. Oh, okay. So he's, I, okay. It started off with me saying people will say anything on the, on the internet. That's what I said. And he he said. Well, time out, time out. Was this an in-person fight or spat or was this, this a online, Facebook man. beef? This is an online spat. So it's Facebook beef. So you niggas was being uh, keyboard not a beef. thugs. It's not a beef. It's not a beef. I responded. He put the, the pigeons are fake, whatever. I said, people will say anything on the internet. And then he said, you ever seen a baby pigeon? Try to Google one. Before I could respond, somebody, somebody Google said, one. Somebody pushed the, posted a picture of baby pigeons and said, took two seconds. Gotcha. He told me, I told him, I said, you are adding to the sentiment that rappers are stupid. And then You didn't have to go there, though, but go ahead. I, I, you're right, I didn't. And I said, how often do you hang out in trees? You didn't have to go there either, but... Like so you. an hour later, he hit me with the slow down there, little buddy. Little buddy. Oh, he sunned you, son. No, he called me, even though I'm 100 percent sure I'm taller <laughs> and heavier than him. Hey, no, but he sunned you, nigga. Slow down, little buddy. That means he's gonna put translation, he's gonna put pause on you if you ever disrespect him like that again. So then I said, You right. Send me a link to some of your music. And he sent me the link. Uh his name is his his name is OK Squad D. <laughs> did some of his music um just did some of his music reinforce his his points and your thought process that all rappers are dumb? No, I didn't say that all rappers are You're dumb. right, I put I, words in your mouth. But did it did, did your 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 um assumption that he was a little off? My my assumption was that my assumption is still correct that what he said when somebody says what he says, it adds on to the belief that rappers aren't smart. Just gotcha. like people saying that Gucci Man is a clone. That's that's like <laughs> that's just stupid, bro. That's just dumb. Well, okay. Okay. So it is, we're not gonna stay here. And well, we're gonna go there because I I thought about it for a long time. And I wanted to say it then, but I was like, nah, but that's dumb, bro. Okay. Like, so it don't make no sense, man. Make your point. It doesn't make any sense at all. If I wanted to clone somebody, right, why would I clone somebody who doesn't have reach beyond a certain small particular sect of people? Like, there are people in the rap community who don't know who, don't know who Gucci Man is. I don't believe that, but go ahead. Yeah, you you don't think I don't think rap- there's any mainstream person or underground artist who is in hip hop culture who does not know who Gucci Mane is. What I'm saying is, a hundred a hundred thousand percent sure that there are underground rappers and or West Coast rappers and or Houston rappers and or Florida rappers. And or New York rappers who couldn't point Gucci Man out of a lineup. So I don't think that anybody in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, um, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Memphis, all of them states. Mm. If you are in tune with hip hop and you are over the age of 10, I am sure you know who Gucci Man is. You might know who he is, but you can't put my lineup. You can't point. You couldn't say that's Gucci Man right there. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, um, let me see. You think Gucci Man is more popular than Scarface? I think there are more people. I think there are more participants of hip hop right now who know no, who, no. who know who Gucci Come is. About period. Come about no, period. Listen to what I'm saying. I okay. think I think that there are more people in hip-hop right now who know who Gucci is but don't know who Scarface is. And see, I'm glad you went there. So, this And is, I think that's a true thing. And I'm not and, and I'm not knocking your take. No, no, no. But this is what I'm talking about. This is what happens. This is what I want to talk about today. This is what one thing. I didn't have any sort of the one <laughs> You know your soapbox today. Yeah, me, yeah, before yeah. you get on your soapbox, let me reiterate that I got to apologize to you. 
because I may or may not have clowned you for having the invisible Mountain Dew that day. And I accidentally grabbed a glass or cup that was Mm -hmm. the same color as my green screen. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, I'm loving it because no one really knows what the fuck I'm doing. You don't know what I'm drinking. I I can't find them. I got one somewhere. Yeah, it's cool. This is a staple of of my, of my, of my, yeah, I can do this when I'm at work too. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So narrative switching. This is, this is a very popular thing nowadays. There are, there are three big examples that I want to talk about, but that's what happened. That was what kind of is happening right now, what you're saying. Well, we can't leave the Gucci main thing, though. Yeah, I'm standing there. Okay. The narrative that I'm painting, I said, do you think Gucci Man is more popular or more is more well-known than Scarface? And you s- slowly and subtly tried to change the narrative and say more people who are in hip-hop currently. I'm talking about period i'm talking about if i go to bulgaria if i go to china if i go to u.s period who people know more of gucci man or scarface see actually i don't think that's a narrative change a, but yeah because if, if you say today B, right now currently B, then yeah it's different B, you are the king of changing narratives i'm not you i'm really trying are. to stay here you're talking about current i'm talking about well, i asked you a because you question. asked me you all right so you it down and to answer narrative. to answer your initial question since you're trying to um accuse me of changing the narrative i think if you I go to bulgaria do. i think if you go to bulgaria the the amount of i think if you go outside of the u.s the amounts of people who know scarface and gucci Mane, yeah it might be the same Okay, you're wrong. You're 100. I mean, wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that this is fact. This is wrong. This is my opinion. But I'll tell yeah, you what. Well, let me tell you why I say that. In my opinion, go ahead. I think you. I think you have to break it down by impact culture and how some of these other countries will get hip hop. So let's let's say Japanese culture. You know, what I'm saying Jap- Japanese culture. Dig your hole. Huh. So go ahead, keep digging your I'm hole. I'm not digging a hole. Japanese Rock. culture, like like sometimes some of these other cultures who grab hip hop, they're not necessarily grabbing the current hip hop, or they're not grabbing the gimmicky shit. They're grabbing like like you'll go somewhere and who's all right, who's your hottest the Lil Baby is like the hottest right now, right? Make my point for me. Keep going. I'm asking Lil Baby's like the hottest right now, right? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I, you might go to Japan or whatever and well, baby might not be the hottest over there. They just not catching on to, to certain cultures. Like if you talk to niggas on the West Coast, they'll tell you all the six fours is in Japan because rich Japanese people bought six fours because they like hip hop culture. And they uh-huh. might still be on Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, the Scarfaces of the world, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Point for me. Like so point for me. Go you might go to some random spot in uh fucking at you know some in. in you know, Dubai or something, and they might really okay. be jamming UGK. So Okay. Make my point for me again. Keep going. To make to 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 answer your question, I, I think it's two part. I think I don't know. I think make I still think it's fifty fifty, bro. Niggas bro. know Gucci man, bro. How about listen? You Niggas just know Gucci, bro. That's what I'm saying. Everything that you're saying would point to people being more more in tune with Scarface because if you say UGK and you hear UGK, all they talking about is how cold Scarface is in their music. You're talking about Dr. Dre. You're talking about all these keep early going, pioneers. Keep going. All these people are talking about Scarface. Let's 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 take it a step further. How much how much does Devin the Dude, K Reno, and these guys tour in the UK and in Europe, right? Do you think that you think these guys are touring in Europe and they don't know who Scarface is? And these guys and these guys who are underlings of 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 Scarface? Come on, man. Right now, for those who can't see the pod, Aaron's getting chewed out by his wife. Uh he's gonna tell me it's his job. But I, I know the look on his face right now. She's telling him to do something. And he's looking like, oh no. Okay, he's back. He's back. He's back. So, uh, yeah, you telling me that the people who are lower tier, not in in skill, but just you know in popularity, the Devin the Dudes, the the K Renos, and the um, the, the uh, street militaries are touring in Europe, but Gucci Man is more popular than Scarface. 
Well, how do you know Gucci not touring in Europe though? Like Gucci tours in Europe. Gucci, first off, Gucci couldn't leave the country for like a year and a half or for like two or three years. He can't that though. But that's five years later. I mean, he's still what? touring though. You think you you don't think he's you don't think that Gucci tours in overseas? He okay. Let's let's, let's look at. The I facts. know what you're saying. In the past, he couldn't, but I know he can now. I've seen this nigga walking around Dubai. He ain't walking around Dubai with Keisha Kior just to spend money. I agree, but in the same breath, what I'm saying is that Scarface has been a staple in hip hop for 30 years. So how do you think that Gucci's five years or 10 years, even if you want to say 10 year run, is bigger than Scarface's 30 years? Well, time out. See, now you're changing the narrative because I didn't say Gucci was bigger than Face. I'm saying he's more popular. I'm saying Face has been a staple of hip hop for 30 well, years. Well, I'm not. So I'm not. Say? I'm not arguing his his stapleness of hip hop. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not. I didn't say that I, Gucci. That Gucci's influence is larger. That he's a bigger staple than Face. All I said was more popular. currently, right now. I just said currently, right now. If you ask people in hip hop who Gucci Mane is or who Face is, you will probably have some people who will know who Gucci is and not know who Face is. But you just it's said... Not, but, it's not, but it's not because Gucci Mane's influence is lo- is bigger. Mm-hmm. It's just activity, bro. Like, Face really ain't been... But you just said, you just said that the old Japanese or are, are, are the other cultures are hopping on the hip-hop. Yeah, but I'm, also... Hey, but, also, today, but, also but, it's, but also, it's like... It's more than just one culture. Like... I'm pretty sure there are people in Japan who bang who bang in Gucci. You did so, but I'm pretty sure there's more people that bang in Scarface. I don't know if we can say that. Go to go to YouTube. We're never soon. gonna have a definite answer because neither one of us has facts to bag to bag no. it up. So at the end of the day, it's really just our opinions. So I can't say your opinion's wrong, and you could be right. You your your opinion could be more right than mine. You could have a point. So I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I'm just saying that you your explanation coincided with my opinion but then you want to say that there's no proof like if you're saying i'm not not even say right or wrong i'm just saying if you're saying that they picked up on hip-hop in the earlier stages and scarface was one of the pivotal poignant stars quote-unquote gods of hip-hop in the earlier times well hold on let's pump our brakes because because uh oh, he put a hand on face. Watch this, y'all. Oh, I'm Come not on. hating on face. I'm a face mob <laughs> fan. What I'm saying is just like how everything happens with with if you ask some people, some people will tell you New York is the mecca of hip hop. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, they will they will say that. Their legends, their rappers are, are are the bar. There's some people who are hip hop heads mm-hmm. from New York, or some people who follow New York as the hip hop authority. Okay, some of them don't know about Ghetto Boys and Scarface. Stop. So you saying that's far fetched? Uh, yeah, that's far fetched. So bro. let me ask you a question. Now, see, coming from you, you're you're a hip hop guy. I'm a hip hop guy. I'm not as strong of a hip hop guy as you are, but you know who Cool G Rap is, right? So the Scarface. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay. Well, this is what I'm saying. You know who Cool G Rap is, though, right? I do. There are some people in our age bracket mm-hmm. who claim that they are hip hop heads. Yeah. And we can ask them about, hey, yo, Cool G Rap. Yeah. They won't know who the fuck you're talking about. That's a tough one to believe. What? You think people don't know who? I know you? for a fact. During verses with uh, KRS One and Big Daddy Kane, yeah, and there was a big deal in the hip hop community about like Cool G Rap not being on stage because you heard, you, said, you heard what you just said. Say it again. You said there was a big deal in the hip hop community about Cool G Rap not being on the symphony. Yes, I bet. Now, now, there are people who are our age. I've talked to a couple of them older than me okay. who should have been versed with the hip-hop symphony 
And okay. they're hip hop guys. Like they love hip hop. Now they love their southern hip hop, but they love hip hop. And not only did they say, Man, who the fuck's Cool G rap? I don't fuck with them New York niggas. Not only did they not really know about Cool G rap, they low key was like, Man, I don't really fuck with Big Daddy Kane and the KRS one. Now you just said who the fuck is Cool G rap? And they knew off the top it was a New York nigga. No, they only assumed it was a New York nigga because there was some New York hip hop shit going on. Okay, well, now I'm this, not arguing this, your point. Now, what now, I'm saying, what I'm saying, what, no, opinion. no. What I'm saying is, and and I don't, I hope I didn't change the narrative. What I'm trying to say is, there are people from the South who don't know who the fuck Cool G Rap is, who are not too versed with KRS One, who really didn't listen to Big Daddy Kane. So, I would be naive to believe that there are some New Yorkers, there are some people from Philly, there are some mm -hmm. people from, from Buffalo that might not know who the legendary Scarface is. If they don't know, that's a problem. But there, there could be some people who are under a rock. Shit, hell, there's some niggas that really don't know that, that Boosie is trying to imitate Pimp C, if you really want to keep it a buck. I just want everybody to know that that was uh, that was Aaron W. and not and not uh, me. So you so so, so you trying to say this is Scarface slander? Oh, what I'm going to say is if I will say that none of your effects are even on this fucking pod. But whatever. There's okay. something called an ox cart you might have to use. Yeah, I am on the ox cart. Well, I, I, it's like it's playing on some speakers behind you. Well, I mean, look, first off, I'm going to be the hater. You can't hate on the hater, okay? Let's go there. But so for that, you get a nice try. Hold on, hold on, but, hold on. For that, I get. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Look, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, like, there are some people who don't know who, uh, there are some people who don't, there are some people who don't, all right, all right, let me ask you a question. I keep going. Should people know who Yuck Mouth is? Hmm. Or the Loonies, period. Uh, hold on. Pause right quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you, you was trying to call me a hater on face. Hmm. Hold on. Recording in progress. Yeah. I'm not a hater on face, by the way. I was just trying to say that <clears throat> there might be some people who don't know who Scarface is. Um, I mean, so the same thing was true. Like it's, it, it was, a, it was a grouping of people who knew who, who know who the Migos are, but didn't know who Bone was. I feel like that's the same thing. Have you heard the Migos early stuff? I have not. Well, what you call early stuff though? Like the first, like. They first mixtapes, like the first three or four projects. Ah, uh, nah, I don't. So I don't even like the Migos, bro. So the Migos, man, like, see, this is we're gonna have. So this is what I say, right? And this is my opinion, not knocking anybody else's. But he definitely finna slander me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna say that. In order for me to. Like, because music is so vibe-ish, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, they're, like, there's, there's certain vibes in music I just can't get with it, right? So I can't, I, can't, I don't like Sky, if you know what Sky is. Because it's just, it's just too rambunctious for me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't like heavy metal. I like some, I don't like heavy metal, you know what I'm saying? Really, to be honest with you, I like some heavy metal groups, like Metallica. Or you know what I'm saying, or uh, maybe Kiss, but what I'm saying is, is that so Future and the Migos, those guys are vibes, bro. And like the ra I can understand the radio stuff turn people off to them, but I also can say that you know I can see the musicianship in it. And my personal okay. belief, yep, my personal belief is that every genre of music is just different pathways to get to musicianship and they all want to be musicians at some point 
whether it be the Migos, whether it be Juicy J, whether it be Metallica, whether it be Journey, whether it be every whatever every genre of music, however you country music, they might start in one place, but the but the goal is to get to that that point where where you're singing and and being melodic, because that's the forever. You know what I'm saying? They I I I assume I just don't that, like I just don't like the Migos, bro. Well, I, I'll couple Migos some of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I believe that I can I can I can I believe that the Migos know that some of the stuff they do is just catchy and that's what it's for. Just like Bad and Bougie. Yeah, like just like River McIntyre, just like uh Michael Jackson, just like Prince, like he know when he making certain music. Oh, this is just for that. But then it got to that the great ones get to the point where they can just do them. You know what I'm saying? Like the Paul McCartney's and the the Michael Jacksons and the Princes. I'm glad like, you brought up the great ones. How you feel about Magic? Who Johnson? No, nigga. The album that uh, Nas and Hempboy just put out. Oh, uh, Nas can spit. That ain't never been a question. You know what I'm saying? Is, is this a hot take from Boogie? No, I'm just not hot at all. Nas can spit his ass off. And he's doing the same thing he's been doing on every album on this album. Just the beat might be a little more modern. How you feel about... So you think it's better than than the King King's Diseases 1 or 2? I think it's just 3, really. I, mean, I, put you, I think no, they he all said the this thing. is not King's Disease. This is magic. And they're working on King's Disease 3 is what he said. I know what he said. But I also told that girl that I was just trying to be her friend. And I was lying. Yeah, you are a hater, bro. We need, to no, def- we need to definitely find a new name for you for this persona, persona that you have for 2022. We're going to get some theme music for this hating ass nigga you've got going on. And I'm right. really going to give you like a five to ten minute segment of whatever the hating ass nigga that your name is going to be for you to just really get your hate off, bro. I, I think we need you. to do that. No, no, no. I think we need to do that. Yeah, we're going to work on that. So let's see. We'll be oh, we'll be okay. back on Sunday, so I'm gonna have a uh, I'm gonna have some intro music for the hating ass nigga that you will be. I'm gonna give you a five minute segment, bro, and you can hate on whatever the fuck you want to. Okay, so topic number one, uh, as we were talking about narrative switching, right? Gotcha, gotcha. And I feel like you you're, you brought up the narrative switching because you're trying to say I'm a narrative switcher. I, I feel like that's what you're saying. Well, I mean, if that's how you feel, if the, if if it's a jacket on the floor and you see a jacket, you know what I'm saying? If it's too small, you're going to walk past it. If it's too big, you're going to be like, man, it's too big for me. But if you if you feel like it fits you, you might try it on. I feel like you try it on because I'm not really talking about you. If, it, you ain't, if, it, ain't, if it ain't drippy, I ain't going to try it on. You keep trying, you keep trying the jacket on saying, is, is the arms long enough? No, it ain't long enough. It don't, it don't fit a real nigga. The jacket you, okay, that you're trying to, the, the, the jacket that's on the floor don't fit a real nigga. But go ahead. What's your point I, number two? You keep trying to, you keep, I'm, I'm, I didn't say it fit, but you keep trying, all I'm saying is you keep trying it on. That's all I'm saying. You know, the number one, the number one sign of a hating ass nigga is no hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Because okay. niggas with no hairline constantly hate on niggas with hairlines. But what's, uh-huh. let's go. What you got? Okay, so uh, the great Kwame Brown. All right, all right. Uh, now the great the- Kwame Brown is different from the Kwame that we interviewed the other night. Yes, Kwame Brown. I'm talking about is the Kwame Brown who he's played with the Wizards. Oh, you um, know what? It's too many Kwames. You know, like I forgot about sorry ass Kwame Brown. I'm I I, I know we got Kwame the the hip hop historian, yeah, and then yeah. we have Kwame the businessman, yeah, just Kwame, just Kwame. Hunter. and those are two different people. So we need yeah. to let the the fans know that. Yeah, and then you have Kwame Brown, the hating ass Mama, nigga. Yeah, Mr. Mama's cooking. So he he had addressed. He had a problem with Gilbert Arenas. Why? That's the that's the. No, he doesn't remember Agent Zero. No chill, Jill. No, they were no teammates. chill, they were, Gil. Yeah, oh. they were teammates. So, no chill, Gil basically came out and was like, "Man, the whole reason you mad, bro, is because I turned out everything that you thought you was gonna get. I ended up getting, bro, and you had to sit and watch that. 
Like it ain't like you was from afar, like, you know, uh whoever came in the third round, whoever got picked for before uh uh Steph Curry, you know what I'm saying? Like and what and we in the same district now are we in the same conference time out, time bro time you're on my, time you're time my time team time. hold on time out and you a basketball nigga i ain't even think about this are yeah. you telling me that kwame brown gilbert arenas and steph curry was in the same draft steph curry came out with ga now oh you just was using that as an example yeah yeah no, I'm saying, okay yeah, okay, I'm okay, saying, okay 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 well, brown kwame brown and gilbert arenas were in the same draft pick yeah 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 Brown was number one gilbert second round something right yeah yeah he had to sit and watch that, like, in in per like I'm sitting looking at you every day, man. Like, dang, this could have been my life, man. What how? But Gilbert so, Arenas was actually cold, though. Yes, and Kwame Brown's supposed to be cold. And GA keeping it so buttered real, man. He was like, bro, I ain't calling you a bust, man. I'm saying that for what happened to you and the position you was put in and the injuries you had, we never got to see what you could be. So you ain't a bust. But he still got beef with no chill kill. He got beef. He, he got beef. So he's like, "What's your beef for me? What? Why? What's the deal?" He's like, "Man, you know, he going off with his old. You let them white folks tell you what to do, and you a bitch ass nigga for the white folks and da da da. You don't say my name." And he's like, "Bro, they asked me a question, bro. I answered the question. I didn't say anything about you negatively, or I ain't try to, and I kept moving. And I, and I said, "What's the problem? Is that the problem?" So anyway, long story short. The more he asked him directly what was going on, the more it became more evident that uh, Kwame Brown just want the fame. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he do. People, like, people was caping for him, but he was really being the worst type of person because he was playing on people's emotions, man. Like, if I say this old emotional stuff or this old fake pro-black stuff, they're going to ride with me, man. But I don't really know what this shit means. I don't even know how to use this correctly. I'm just... I peep from, from, from the get green that... Kwame was tripping with himself. Like, it sounded good. At, at, at the climate that was going on, it mm-hmm. sounded good for somebody to say, you hating on a black man. You letting them white folks control the narrative or control what you say. Mm-hmm. It sounded good at that time. But it, it just was him saying crazy shit like attacking Stack 5. and uh, what's, what's, what's the other homie name, bro? Matt Barnes. Yeah, you attacking these guys, man. You know what I'm saying? And they were just like, bro, they speaking truth. Like, nigga, you were sorry as fuck, bro. And then Stephen A, how Stephen A did him, it was it was kind of fucked up. But I mean, he asked for it though. Like, you can't you can't come at a man who has the platform to go pull the footage and mm-hmm. show why you a bust. Like, that's all this man is paid to do. He showed every single second. Every what- single second of why you a bust. And it wasn't even every single second. It probably was just a small sample size. Yeah. And he put that shit on national TV. I mean, you know I'm saying, man. And the coldest part about it is the name. Now, the now name. I will say this, though. Charlemagne was a hoe for what he did. About the daddy? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Charlemagne was a hoe for that. That ain't the first time Charlemagne been a hoe. It ain't going to be the last time Charlemagne was a hoe. Charlamagne do some whole shit, bro, but that's his brand. Like he's a he's like the shock jock brand. But my question is that, and I forget, did Charlemagne do that just out of the blue? Or did Kwame come at Charlemagne first? Because if Kwame came at Charlemagne first, I yeah. can kind of see why he did it. I know I know Charlemagne gave him Donkey the other day. But bringing that shit up that had nothing to do with him. It's kind of fucked up. That type of shit uh, Charlemagne does, though. So, but you don't like Charlemagne, though. I mean, I'm not against him, but I don't think that his platform is as big as it should be. I don't think his platform should be as big as it is. It's the, the Breakfast way he Club, huh? It's the Breakfast Club. It don't matter, man. I don't mean that's not the prerequisite to be an asshole. Well, I just think he's an asshole. I think I think the Breakfast Club is a fire platform. Some people don't like him. Some people don't like Envy. I ain't got no issue with Envy. I should. I like Charlemagne. I don't know how I feel about Angela Yee, though. I think. Speaking of Angela Yee, did you hear the uproar of her clips from lip service and why everybody's, you know, in the uproar? No, I did not. 
Apparently, Jim Jones was on lip service. You know what lip service? Oh, is? okay, I see. Yeah, okay. But the you, one about you know, mom kind of, kissing. yeah, you know what kind of pie lip service is, though, right? What is that? Lip service to me is in the realm of like horrible decisions, kinks with Kiki. They're kind of like sex positive podcast. Uh, yeah. You got, you got a panel of young women. Far as well, I don't know how young Angela Yee is, but you got a pro, you got a platform of women. You know, like Angela Yee and some of her co-hosts. And they just, you know, sex positive podcast. Same thing. You're age shaming, bro. I'm not age shaming, bro. I mean, I don't. I, I know she's older than me, nigga. She, she was fucking. She was oh intern for Wu Tang. She got to be older than me. And I mean, she ain't bad looking for her age. I was forty. I date Angela Lee. She cool. She cute. I don't I want to get. I I want to, I'm looking out for your business interest, brother. I ain't talking down on her, my brother. What you talking about? I want none of them come for you, man. I want them. I want them to know that you. Oh no, I'm not man. talking down on them at all. I just no, nah, ye 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 fire, bro. I, I ain't talking down on Angela Ye. What I'm saying is, um, it's like a sex positive podcast. Like horrible decisions, they're kind of sex positive. They talk about black kinks and things like that. Lip mm-hmm. service does the same thing. Uh Kinks with Kiki, she does the same thing. They're all fire podcasts. He was on the podcast. And I guess he said that his mother showed him how to tongue kiss. Um, he probably put some sauce on it. It's Jimmy. I, mean, I heard I heard he said he tried to clean it up real quick by saying that uh and she was young, 17 when she had me yo, so she was mad young, you know. I mean, it sounds crazy if you're telling me your mom showed you how to tongue kiss. And if you're trying to say that she tongue kissed you. When she said it, she made it sound like she told him how to tongue kiss, like mm-hmm. Maybe she just showed him. She didn't kiss him. She mm-hmm. just was standing there and like opened him off and showed him without kissing him. So like maybe, in my maybe. mind, I'm sitting here watching my mom open her mouth and move her tongue around. Like, oh, that's what you do? Okay. She might have kissed him on she might have tongue kissed his cheek. That's wild when you say it like that though. On the cheek, man. That's wild, but at least you that's can't not- tongue kiss somebody on their cheek, bro. You can you can do it. You can like put your tongue on their cheek and then like uh, 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 and then they will ask you, "What's that thing that you do with your tongue?" You got you, you, you teach your daughter how to tongue kiss? Heck no! Nah, that's man. what I thought, my nigga. That's what I thought. So that's just the you know that's just the uh, I want to say shortcut. That's just the relationship that we form, and I, it's weird for me. You know, I so off that Jimmy shit, bro, because that's him and his mom business. There ain't no business. How yeah. do you do that? Your, your daughter comes up to you and say, "Daddy." Yeah. Uh, and let's say your daughter. How old is your daughter right now? 14. Okay, she's 14. So it's not out of the realm. I mean, I know fathers don't want to hear this, but she's at the, <laughs> she, she's at the dating age. Um, so what do you do if she... And I feel like you are the type of father where you and your daughter can have a conversation. Because you're a very progressive guy. Uh, I feel like that the way you probably parent, your daughter can have this conversation with you. What do you do if she says, Dad, can you give me some pointers on kissing? How do you handle that? Well, one, I think that as progressive as I may uh, seem or be, you know, think about it like people see their parents, and that, that's their standard, right? Right. So because my standard might be a little bit forward to others. To her, it's the norm, right? So she feel like I'm strict because I'm a parent because what I'm the person setting the boundaries, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying right. these are the parameters that you shouldn't go by. So now she don't see it like I'm open and she think like I'm too tough and I lecture too damn much. So you don't think your daughter would actually approach you and say, hey, how do you kiss? Uh, I hope she wouldn't. <laughs> I hope. I mean, because like, man, no, nah, man. All right. And it's, it's cold because like you, in one essence, it's like the, not just the uncomfortable of of it, but the fact that these are certain things that you, that you should learn on your own. But let me ask you a question though. Right. To, to play devil's advocate. Because I'm not a father, but I am a father figure and a couple of, a small handful of uh, young adults now lives where yeah. I've been there 
through growing through them growing up and and having a hand in raising. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know how I I'm seen to them. Yeah. So if they can't get the information from you, like, are you comfortable with them getting it from somewhere else? Like, where would you want them to get the information from? I mean, there's, I mean, to be honest, kissing is not something like if if she asks me about having sex, then that's a different conversation, right? But kissing, like, I don't think she's stupid. So I don't think people say like, kissing means sucking dick. Something I'm crazy like that, you know what I'm saying? Like so, I don't think she'd be that so dumb. There could be some little long, young boys that can tell her that. So yeah. I, for me, it was like an experiment, though. Like it just happened, and I I don't want to sound toxic. Mm-hmm. I think the first young lady I had a, a real kiss with, I was in middle school, and um, I think she was a, a little more advanced than me. Okay. Yeah, she took the lead. I was like, oh, this is, and this is weird. And to this day. I'm not the tongue kissing affectionate guy because the first experience was just weird. So you're telling me that this little girl rocked you into celibacy? She tongue kissed you into a lifelong life of celibacy? I I don't like <laughs> I wish Kevin was here for this joke, man. It, I need Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that, bro. I just I was, need you. I, I, it was I, that, I was weird, joking, bro. bro. It was weird. That was, that was I, a great so if, All right, a moment of tra- a, a moment yeah. of transparent <laughs> moment of transparency. Now, first so experience with the young, too far. the young lady. When bitches and I play. <laughs> so the first experience, it was weird, bro. It was weird. And then she only had one titty. No, it just was. She was forceful with it. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't enjoyable, bro. Saying she was too hard on you, bro. She she kind of took it from you. I think she had. I I'm 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 dissecting things as I'm an older person now. I'm being toxic as well. So keep going. Yeah, please be toxic. So yeah, it's not like you try, you try you put say, and then she touched me, and like a tear come down. Like, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, <laughs> I think that she might have been advanced because she had an. I think she might have had an experience with some a, a male way too older. So just good, bro. You sound no, real it was right horrible, now. bro. I felt. Have you ever seen what was that movie where the alien tongue kissed the nigga and she killed the nigga because she really had an alien tongue and it went down his throat and killed him? Species. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like it could have been that. You saying you got probed? Is Maybe. that, you, is that how you gonna say you got touched? Like, no. Nah, see, she touched me the other way. It went through my tongue. It came through my whole body and then it ended up in my booty hole. Sure, be toxic. It was just a horrible, a horrible, a horrible experience. And she touched me, bro. No, she didn't touch me. And as okay. I grew older, you know, I, I experienced great, you know, kissing, greater, interactions. greater kissing. But then I was messing with this one chick. Yeah. And she was way older than me. Like she was my brother age. And I was trying to be a wingman for my brother. Yeah. So I, I just messed with double the date whole. Citizens, 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 you double actually date. you and you know about this. You know about this young lady I was messing with. Okay, I want to hear it. I don't know. I'm gonna play, I'm play dumb. The problem was she was old and she smoked Newports, bro. Oh yeah. Newport kiss is bad. Oh man. Yeah. New Newport Newport kiss is bad. It, I wish you'd have married an older woman so I could have had all types of you knocking down grandma jokes. Yeah, it was bad. O- older Newport Newport kiss is bad. So, um, Ooh. yeah, but that was my 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 first experience. Experience was like an experiment. So, like, that's that's part of the journey, bro. It's part of the journey. But what do you do when your daughter says, "Hey, how you kiss?" Like, do, do you what 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 is your response? Go. Your daddy on the cheek, forehead, maybe. Nah, she want to know how to kiss a boy she like. Why y'all kissing, man? You know they got cover going right now, man. Y'all just shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I like the answer. I like the answer. Maybe in maybe in a couple of years, three, four years, you know what I'm saying? So look, yeah. I saw another wild clip from this interview. Mm-hmm. Niggas was killing Jimmy. Cause Jimmy said he graduated Catholic school. Yeah. And 
You went to Catholic school, correct? I did too. Yes, Is Catholic did. school curriculum tougher than regular school? Uh, yeah. So he did say that. He said Catholic school curriculum was tough. I think him and Freaky were in the same Catholic school or whatever. That was a wild class. So then he got kicked out of Catholic school, had to go to regular school. I did as well. And of course, once he got re- to regular school, he was too smart for regular school because he was in Catholic school. Way too smart. So then, you know, he graduates. He gets an intern at a law firm. And decides, what? Get an intern at a law firm. Here's Biggie on the on radio and decides to quit the law firm because he wanted to go rap. But because he promised his grandma he would go to college, he went to some college. Sounds like it's some bullshit-ass community college in New York where everybody thinks it's a joke. He was in college trying to do the college thing because he promised his grandma. And Cam called him one day and was teasing him. was like, what you in class for? We, we got to go move these bricks. So he mm-hmm. quit college to go move bricks and essentially rap. And people was clowning Jimmy because they was like, what kind of nigga has an intern in the law office <laughs> after graduation and says, you know what? I'm going to quit doing this to go rap, which... I mean, in theory, it was a good decision because he's making more money rapping than he would be lawyering. That's true. So you really can't clown him. And then someone in the comments said, Jimmy, been the police. That ain't my business. <laughs> but it's crazy, bro. I, I was thinking about this. I think R&B singles are more gangster than gangster rappers. I mean, hmm. Nate Dog used to go to the studio with a gun and a bulletproof vest. He was more gangster than some of the gangster rappers. You think Nate Dog was more gangster than Tupac? Yeah, man, because Nate Dog also was a vet, bro. Was one Nate Dog a Marine? He was a Marine or something, bro. Imagine being. A I could kid. have the branch of service wrong, but I know he was. I think he was a vet. I think. If if I if I if I paid attention to the docu series about him. I think he was a vet. Could be wrong though. Uh, I would say, um, if he was a vet, it's a bunch of vets that rap, like Mystical, him, Ice T. I I feel like all three of them niggas you just named was about that action though. I don't know if Ice T is about that action. Ice T might fuck you up. You know. I'm on the West Coast. I'm fuck on the, the East Coast. I'm on the order with a West Coast accent. Talking about Ice T from the East Coast. Ice T's from the West Coast. Uh-oh. I want to say he's from he's from California. What's up, player? What's up, player? Oh man, shouts out to uh, man, I'm not shouts out. Uh, prayers up for DJ K Slay, man. He's on life support from COVID, man. I thought his brother said he was doing a little better, but yeah, prayers up to DJ K Slade. Who was the young man from H Town? He was a producer. He actually passed away from COVID. Mm. D Bando. I ain't never heard of him, but until now, but apparently he was a producer. D Bando. That's messed up. I'm gonna let you make it honest, man. No, I never heard him before. You got you can you can have to put that in there though. You could just like R. I. P. Man. No, I was, I, I, never I, heard bro, of I was looking on the timeline and somebody posted like D Bando RP and there were people who was like, well, okay, cool. I'm sorry, RP, but what did he do? Oh, yeah, I messed up, man. I mean, if I you want to, I mean, I can't if you want to cover the, if you want to keep it a beam, I don't. Yeah, you got to question my, my 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 life choices after I die. It's over, man. I already made this mistake, man. I'm not questioning any life choice, bro. I didn't know who the young man was. I mean, I mean, I mean the young man was obviously a producer. Well, I know that now. You know what? When I die, man, just, just look, just, and so they think, that's messed up now, just, just give one of these, man. Nah, but. Because you'd be like, man, I, man, I think I need to he was fucking that, that girl with what's called with AIDS, so, you know, I, I don't know what say you that, mean. But if you do pass before me, I would assume we would have to take your body uh, back to Africa like one William Quartermain, and then you will come back to life. If I came back to life, bro, if I came back to life, what would you think I would say? I'm back, niggas. <laughs> or you would just ask, where's the open gym? I definitely, like... You definitely didn't never watch the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. 
I didn't like it. That was his superpower. That was quarter, that, that was his superpower. His superpower oh, he was yeah, he, he couldn't die, die yeah, as yeah. long as he was buried back in Africa. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. why he okay, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why he always I, said, take my body back to Africa. Yeah. I I would agree that you got me on that music, on that uh movie tidbit because I forgot which movie that came from. Because Quartermain had his own movie by itself. But they put quarter like he had other Quartermain books and movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he was a standalone uh he, he was the standalone Western gunslinger who was from Africa. Cause in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the little the look the it was it was implied that the young gunslinging cowboy mm-hmm. was gonna be his protege. But Mr. William Quartermain always had to be buried back in like like everybody had a superpower. Yeah, yeah. Like the little young gunslinger couldn't miss. Yeah. You know what I'm what saying? Was, and the then vampire the vampire fix? nigga, it was his painting he couldn't look at. It was a was it was it it was a painting of himself he couldn't look at. Yeah. Um of course you had uh what's your boy? Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You had your homie, uh the Arabic homie. Uh, oh yeah. With the with the sub. Yeah. His sub was his power. That's why he never was too far away from his sub. And I think that was the most fire power of them all, him and his sub. That sub was fire, bro. How racist are movies made before 2000? Very. And 10? Very. Every single one. Have you ever, oh, thank you. Have you ever been in the presence of a real racist before? All the time. Now, do you think all races are bad people? No, not at all. Matter of fact, there I was in a presence recently in my life of a racist who is not a bad person at all. Mm-hmm. And 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 I think he's more of an asshole than a racist. Yeah. I don't think he's really, 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 or she, because I don't want people to try to pinpoint what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't think the person in question really is a racist. I just think the person in question is an asshole who happens to be slightly racist. Now, I've been also in the presence of pure racists, but mm-hmm. you can be racist and not a bad person because you're not a bad person to the person that you love. Like, the, ser- you ever, the serial killer has a mother who he loves and who she loves him. How how does it make you feel when you realize you have more in common with racists? Does it make you feel like you might have some racist ways? Because, you know, when you're talking to racists... Because let's let's eject the fact or let's eject the thinking that racist means you're a bad person or that you're wrong, right? Okay, 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 just, okay. It's, it's something that you are. You just you know, have you, a bias at the end of the day. Basically, yeah, you're you're, you're stupid by it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Racist. So, but it's like a lot of stuff that you might have a common thinking ways that you have in common with racist, and that makes it even extra wilder. Is on top of that, you're like, well, damn, am I racist? I have a question that might not go over too well. Go ahead. What's the difference between black power and white power? You mean like... Or black pride and white power. What's the difference? White power. Are you talking about white power? Because white people actually made a way to have power. They said white power and then they like fucked other people up. And then when you say, you know, black pride or brown pride, you're really having pride in who you are, your culture, and you're trying to overcome some of the bullshit that white power did to you. So I get that. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, it's kind of messed up. Like, racism is so messed up. And just the whole, because like, in actuality, how I get mad at somebody for wanting to be in charge? It's not wanting to be in charge. It's the means by which they they... Yeah. They went after it. I agree. So then, I'm afraid, me and I you, know I can strive to be in charge. I can even strive to have a bias where if I'm in a position to put people in position of power mm-hmm. and to succeed, I'm going to go grab someone who looks like myself. The problem is if I step on people who don't look like me in the process. So if I have a position open up for hiring and I have a black applicant and a white applicant and I'm in charge of interviewing, I should, in theory, hire the person who is best suited for the job, regardless of what they look like, color, background, religion, any of that. Now, if I have two applicants who are equally measured and good for the job, mm-hmm. and I choose to use my bias and want to hire someone of color, 
That's fine. Or someone wants to use their bias to hire someone who looks like them, someone who they can ad- identify with, someone who they're comfortable with. I understand it. It happens all the time. You're a racist or you're abusing your power if you say, I'm going to hire this person simply because they they black and they, mm-hmm. might, and they might not be qualified, but I don't care. I think that's some bullshit. Agreed, agreed. So uh, the A-B situation... I'll be back here. I knew he was going to be back here. What you I mean? I, I, I've changed my stance somewhat, but also I've dug in on some of my stance. So uh, I'm going to go first, and then I'll let you go on your soapbox. My chance has not. My you chance. Be telling me that I'm going to let you get on, you, you on your soapbox. Because I know my stance has not changed in the fact that he shouldn't have handled it how he handled it. Um mm-hmm. Like I said last pod, and I think that I think it's I, I like I said last pod. If Bruce Arians mm-hmm. did some fuck shit, so if AB said, "Hey, I tweak my shit, I can't go back in and play," mm-hmm. and Bruce Arians knew that and was trying to force Homie to go back in, injured and knew he was injured, mm-hmm. he needs to be uh, suspended and fired. Okay. So I feel like if AB said what he said, I, I haven't seen the text. I, I tried to look for him out of Tim. I heard he pulled some receipts. Mm-hmm. If he has proof that Bruce Arians knew about an injury um, in game and still told him to go back, they should do what they always do. The NFL should be a... Uh, the NFL should, should should be investigating this, and I don't think he should be on the sideline. I think he should be, I don't know, suspended with pay until they until they investigate it. If these things are true, mm-hmm. I've noticed that since these things have happened, AB has been cut. Of course, once he got his lawyers involved, and lawyers made a statement, AB got cut. I do think it's um, it's a little suspicious that AB didn't get fined for taking the shoulder pads off and, and doing what he did, leaving the field. NFL mm-hmm. will find you for anything. So if he didn't get fined for that, leave, huh? He was asked to leave, though. But I'm saying, if he didn't get fined for it, it don't matter if he was asked to leave or not. If the mm-hmm. NFL didn't find him for that, it could be some truth to what he's saying. Bruce mm-hmm. Arians might have did some foul shit, and they might. That's that's their way of saying, "Well, we not gonna, we ain't gonna find him because he he might have did some fuck shit." Mm-hmm. Um, I do think it's quite convenient that after all this has happened, you have a um, Instagram influencer who claims that AB snuck her into a hotel room, and she tested positive for COVID, and now there's question on. A B breaking COVID protocol and uh, putting other players in danger. Like mm-hmm. it's a lot of you know what I'm saying. It's like once A B says, "Man, this coach, man, this coach didn't respect me saying I was hurt. Told me to go back in there and play again, hurt, or I'm off the team." You know what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden, it's it's like things are coming up to throw smut on his name. It's like if you if you think Deshaun Watson got his situation anything similar like similar to that. Yeah, it's uh, and, and what I'm saying is how I feel about D- Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Some of this shit on a smaller scale, I can see that happening to like oh shit, you want to play hardball, you want to you want to do this and that with your lawyer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look, he might have snuck old girl in, but it's like all, all of a sudden she tests negative. The lady who was willing to lick a toilet. You don't think the shit do some extra for some bread? By the way, if AB is smashing the influencer who wanted to lick an airplane toilet because she thought COVID was fake, that speaks volumes about him. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. That's AB, all I'm man, I, the thing is, the, the, I would, I would have, I would have, I would have jumped all the way back in my seat and apologized if Bruce Arians. Hadn't said that he didn't he do nothing about the injury. 
Like if he if he would have said, Yeah, I know about it, but I thought he was lying or you play it, but he's like, I didn't know he was injured. Like Well what, you, Bruce, well, what Bruce Arians is saying, I didn't know he was injured at the time he was on the sideline. So but you Bruce, knew, but you knew, Bruce, but you knew he, was, he knew he was, you knew he was injured all week because he didn't practice. Yeah, but see, and that's what I was trying to tell you last pod. Like, <laughs> like once once you suit up and you get on the field and you play, then you, then from because what what was said was, well, he was clear to play. So in my mind, he was healthy enough to play. So when I told him to go back in, he mm-hmm. told me, "No," nah. I said, "Well, yeah, you off team if you don't play." He shouldn't have said that shit, and like, and I and I agree with you. If I if I'm a coach, and I know my guy's been dealing with an injury all week, and I say, "Hey man, go back in the game," and my guy tells me, "Coach, I'm injured." Well, coach, I don't I don't feel right. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say go back in the game when you off this team. If my guy tells me that, and I know he's been dealing with a lingering injury all week, I'm gonna mm-hmm. say, "Bet, hey." Go go check go 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 get with the coach staff. Let's see what rat, you know, and and go to locker room. We are gonna shut you down for the week. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say get on the field or you off this team. Yeah. Now, what AB did was fully Wayne. I can agree to that. That that was some fully Wayne. Like of all the things in the world to do, it was. Do that. But but in the same breath, man. I've seen way, way more, way more uh, ostentatious exit to a job. And why would Bruce Arians lie, man? Why, like, this is the part of, like, there's no way in the world you being the head coach don't know that your your defunct, he's the number one option on the offense because the other, the other two, the other two options that are, that are great are double team. So that makes him the number one option. Like they're gonna double team Gronk. They're gonna double team Mike Evans. God wouldn't hurt. They can't double team three people, man. So you number one option. So I know your status. Brady knows your status and I know your status at all times. I know if you hurt, if you're not going as good, if you're not catching everything. I know. So why would he say that? So you know, I'm not forgive I'm not Well Bruce Bruce, Bruce Arians ain't one of one team. No only person even one of them knows Brady. So, that's what I'm saying. So, but this man. is the thing, though. This thing, though, and it, and this is what and this is what I mean about controlling your narrative. This is what I mean about you know what I'm saying being a professional. So the D Hops of the world, the Andre Johnsons of the world, the Julio Jones of the world, yeah, the Mike Evans of the world, okay. They come out the game, coach they go back in, and they say, Coach, man, I don't feel right. I feel like they're handled differently because they've carried themselves differently. Like A B has a track record of did this. D-Hop, did D Hop get traded to a to um a, a team that couldn't win? Or that was like D D Hop got traded, man, for some pennies, man. And D Hop got knows? traded. D Hop got traded because you had a coach slash GM, A, who who didn't know what he was doing, and B was was threatened because D Hop had more influence over his star quarterback than he had. So D Hop was irregardless. No, no, listen, I'm saying D Hop was a D Hop was a leader in the locker room. It had the ear of his franchise quarterback. Mm -hmm. So your coach slash GM really got mad because he couldn't control the narrative in that locker room with that guy and traded him out of spite. Same what reason, the, same, same. I'm saying it. That, that, and saying. actually, that was, the, the, that, that was the demise of the Texans. The demise of the Texans was, was people who didn't know what they were doing, who had power to move players, and they moved players. Dwayne Brown never should have been moved how he was moved. Uh, D-Hop never should have been moved how he was moved. Now, if you're saying you couldn't pay D-Hop what he wanted, you knew you were going to lose him anyway, even though that's bullshit, you move him and get more than what you got. You, you know, today, this today in this part, it's your name, this part, I agree with Boogie because you're making my point. What, you what, I'm, saying, what I'm saying is D-Hop and Julio Jones and and, and Dwayne Brown 
were the epitome professionals, man. They did everything the right way and well, still got well, fucked up. With, with, so, with, hold on, talk about, talk about. Now, with Dwayne Brown and Julio Jones, so moving Dwayne Brown wasn't a bad move. Dwayne Brown was coming off an injury. You had to pay Dwayne Brown top dollar. Moving Dwayne Brown. What you saying right now, you know, bro? That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Because what you're saying right now is a business move. And I'm saying that that's what it's coming down to. But listen, but listen, to, what, but listen to what I'm saying. Don't about your character, bro. But listen if to what I'm saying. But listen, but listen to what I'm saying. Moving Dwayne Brown was a business move because he was coming off an injury. He was an older player. You didn't know how many more good years he had. Now, you didn't realize that you were going to move Dwayne Brown and get nothing for him. And but then you moved him for business reasons, not for personal reasons. You moved reasons. him for business. Well, they moved him for personal reasons, too. That's what I'm saying. Because he so, took a knee. And we had an owner at the time who said we can't let the inmates run the asylum. So they so, had yeah. so so that's why they moved Dwayne Brown. So now once again you're saying people people get moved can get moved on the on the strengths of how somebody else feel about them. Well one hundred percent. The NFL so why, is a so business. why I gotta so why I gotta be why I gotta follow your rules if if I follow your rules or if I don't follow your rules, you still have the ultimate control. All right, because look, peep gang, peep no gang, peep gang. The NFL is a business, right? Mm -hmm. So the Houston Texans are a brand. The Houston mm -hmm. Texans are going to move within their best interests. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I'm in the NFL, Aaron Williams himself, mm -hmm. I'm a player, but I'm also a separate brand. Mm -hmm. So I have to move accordingly. Now we look at a guy like Dwayne Brown. Dwayne Brown is a pros pro, very professional guy. You know what I'm saying? He's what you want to model your your players after. Mm -hmm. They could have moved Dwayne Brown wherever they wanted to. There was no restrictions on moving him. The biggest issue with moving Dwayne Brown was he was an older player who, who you had to pay a lot of money, and he was coming off injury. Outside of that, professionalism wasn't an issue and mm -hmm. anything else. So... That doesn't stop where you can move him. That doesn't stop him making his money. He went to Seattle. He still got bread. He's not playing on an incentive latent contract because of his brand and because of how he carries himself. What I'm saying is with Antonio Brown, this has been a thing. He had a temper tantrum. He quit on the team in, P in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was an issue. It was the coach staff. You had one of the most player-friendly coaches in uh, Mike Tomlin. In, in Pittsburgh, and he put up with you nine seasons, I think it was. Uh, no, and, and he's one of the most player friendly coaches. This is a guy who tripped a defender, so his so his guy can get a touchdown. That don't uh, that's not a player friendly coach for you. I'm gonna let you finish. So you couldn't you, you it didn't work there. You went to the to the Las Vegas Raiders. John Gruden and the Raiders was bidding at your will. That was not the John Gruden, was it? It was John John Gruden and the Raiders. Well, I'm saying Las Vegas Raiders because they're there now. Of course, they weren't in Vegas at the time. They were bending at your will. First, it was a foot injury. Then it was a, I don't want to. I want to wear the helmet. I want to wear not the helmet that they're telling me I need to wear because the helmet that I want to wear is old and outdated. Like, dude, if Brett Favre, not Brett Favre. If Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady can get with the program and switch it up, so can you. That was the issue. Then once the helmet thing was the issue, I just don't I don't want to play here. So now they move you. Or you mm -hmm. get cut. Mm -hmm. You had the bag that you wanted, that you held out for, got to Vegas or LA, did the same thing with Derek Carr. You made it seem like it was a Derek Carr issue and an organizational issue. Got cut. So now the bag that you held out for, you lost, got cut, and now you're playing on incentive latent contracts. Now you go to New England because Tom Brady said come to New England and Tom Brady wants you in New England and mm -hmm. Bill Belichick don't want to deal with you. And because you have some off the field issues, that gives Belichick out. Now you're not on the field. You're still dealing with some questionable off the field issues. And because Brady is vouching for you, and says, hey, I will let him come in my house, sleep on my sofa. I'm going to look out for him. And you do that. And now you in this incentive laden contract for the Bucks. And now you in this position. And everywhere you go, it's someone else's fault. 
No, nigga. Some of that is your fault. If you would act accordingly when something like this happens, then people will give you the benefit of the doubt. And they'd be like, hey, Bruce Arians, what you did to this dude? Instead, it's AB being AB. Guilty and temporal innocent. All right. You're right. So, you're, you're right. No, 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 he is. But peep game. If I'm known for walking around robbing people at gunpoint, okay. if I'm known for that, yeah. if I have a rap sheet that states Aaron Williams will rob someone at gunpoint, yeah. the one time... Not only do I say I didn't rob you at gunpoint, I got robbed at gunpoint. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna believe me. Gonna be like, that, you that, full that's, of shit. That's, all you're saying is that people don't believe. All you're saying is human nature. That's all you're talking about. But it's, not but it's, but it's my right. track record. It's, it's, it's my track record, though. But it don't mean it's right, though. I okay, didn't say so, it was oh. right. I didn't I never said any of this was right. And matter of fact, I've I've said if if Bruce Arian did what A B said that he did, yeah, and again, the reports that Ian Rappaport reported mm-hmm. were solely based on what was coming from AB's camp. That's not what he said. He said sources on the field. We'll keep going. No, no, no. They cleared up the sources on the field. It was from AB's camp because then they started releasing his receipts that he had with with coach uh, with coach. It was he, AB's he two, all two, of this two. stuff that, that that Ian Rappaport reported from. Yeah, it came from AB's camp. But it, but okay, but. Um, AB showed text of Arians telling him, telling him Arians, uh, my ankle been hurt. Like if, we, if you if you can suit up, go. We need you. Once again, Arians has knows that this man's ankle again was hurt. He said, if you can suit up, go. So but, but if, know, you I'm hurt, go, you know, if you can't go, if you know you're hurt and you can't go, don't suit up. Time out, time out. But then, but he that's, suited right. up. Okay, you're right. But, but no, you're right. You're right. You're, you're right. You're right. Some of the reason why he's he right. suited no, up. But you're right. But what I'm saying is, how could Arians come back and say, "I didn't think, I didn't know he was hurt"? Like he could, if if somebody say, he could, if he said, "Oh yeah, he told me he was hurt earlier, but he played, so I thought he wouldn't hurt no more." That's one conversation. You know I'm why saying, he got out? I, I, I didn't know he was hurt, and you know he, you knew he was hurt, man. But you know why he got out? Who? I'm going to tell you why Bruce Arians has an out. You ready? Go. Bruce Arians has an out because pregame, everything he was told from the from the, from the the medical staff is yeah. A.B. good to go. He going to sue yeah. him. He's What's, gonna no, he, it's not out because he knows. He had, no, 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 time out, time out. At this point, he has an out. From my no. Underst- no, listen to what I'm saying. From my understanding, my player yeah. is good to go. He can play. Now, like I said earlier, if Mm. I'm the player and I come off the field, I feel like I've tweaked something, Mm -hmm. you dig, and the coach tell me to go back in the game, I'm going to say, coach, man, I think I I I tweaked something. Let me go partner with 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 the medical staff and get it checked out. Okay, so question. So you, you, what you're telling me is that the medical staff uh, uh, went went um talked to him before the game. Talked to I mean, went dealt with Brown before the game. Gave him a shot in his ankle before the game. Went to the coach and didn't tell the coach. Yeah, we gave him a shot. What I'm telling you is that if AB got with the medical staff, took a shot before the game, suited up, and was available to play, to said yeah. coach. AB is available to play. He's clear at medical protocol. He so can play. Not, so they, they, we didn't say anything about the shot. We, we didn't say nothing about we the shot. We shouldn't have to say anything about the shot. If he, if, if, the, if the player agreed to take the shot and yeah, suit it up you, and is playing. Tell, no, listen to what I'm saying. No, listen to what I'm we, saying. Yes, because you're going to. No, 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 listen to what I'm man. saying. I'm not talking crazy I'm at all. No, I'm, I'm not talking, what happened. Cra- I'm I'm not say, talking crazy at all. If the player, coach, no, I'm no, gonna be stop, like, stop, stop, it, up. stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. If the player is cleared by the medical staff to play, that's all the coach needs to know, and the player is playing. Oh. Now, where the coach lacks, oh. no, yes. If, cause, so, because if that, because... At that point, I'm a coach. I'm not a medical physician. I'm not a medical physician. I'm not a trainer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not on staff as a doctor. Anything and any information that I'm dealing with when it involves this player and their health is from the medical staff. 
If the but player, the, bro, listen to what I'm saying. No, 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 no time, I gotta, time, 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 time. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm I am, what saying. No, I'm. I am calling plays, my nigga. I am yes, managing exactly. a game, my so nigga. If I know, if I know I can't he's manage, ankle hurt, I can't manage. If no, I know his ankle hurt, I, I know how to cross the play for him. Listen to what I'm saying, bro. I can't manage his 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 health. I'm told that this person is cleared to play. He's he's healthy. He's playing. He's suited up. Whatever prep is done is done. Now, if that player comes off the field and tells me I can't go back in because of said injury, as a coach, I should be managing my players and I should say, hey, bet. I know you had that existing injury. You go check with the medical staff. Wide receiver number, whatever. You in the game. That's what should happen. No. It's not That's even, not what bro. should happen? Not even, bro. Well, you, tell, saying, you tell me what should happen. I'm saying this, if I'm a coach of any sport, we see it all the time when when um Jalen Hurts hurts his it has a, a, a bad knee and he, he cleared to play, right? But I know he got a bad knee as a coach. I'm not gonna run him the same as if he wasn't hurt just because he was clear to play. Nah, I'm protecting his knee, bro. If I know Antonio Brown got a bad ankle, I'm not going to call plays where you got to do triple moves, double moves, because I know he's not going to be good. That's, that's, not not real. A, that's not a real thing. I, huh? It's not a real thing. What's not a real thing? I'm told at the beginning of the game, Antonio Brown is good to go. 100%. So, so, he so, so hold on, hold on, hold So you're telling, me, you're telling me that my quarterback just got hit last week. Deshaun Watson got a, he cleared to go. He got a bad ACL. You telling me that Bill Brown wasn't calling plays to not run him for the first four or five games? I'm telling you, if my quarterback is 100 percent cleared to go, you gonna run you gonna run the same and shit. Fuck it. No, see, see, you're you're asking two different questions. You're talking about a quarterback, a franchise quarterback, any player that's Listen injured. I'm, I'm not Listen gonna to what go. I'm not, okay. Listen to what I'm saying. You're talking about a franchise quarterback who Bill O'Brien was irresponsibly running running plays for. I don't care if he had a torn ACL or not. Versus a skill position wide receiver whose job is to run routes and get open. If my receiver is not physically able to run routes and get open, he should not be on the field, if so you're saying, so you're saying that no, if, listen to what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Listen to what I'm saying. saying. If no, me being that a coach, don't if, play hurt, and they don't change the play if the play is hurt. If me being a coach, no, bro, that's not. And real. I'm told that I'm told. my player is cleared to play. I'm going to use my player how I use him. Now, no one said no. No, talk about no one that's said. Dumb, bro. Listen, listen to what I'm saying though. It's not dumb. No one said that. That that the coach was using A B recklessly. That's not what was in question. We didn't say that. Is that what I'm was saying, said? What I'm saying is, if you're saying is, if you're a coach and he cleared by the medical staff, he suited I'm, up. He's cleared to play. And I'm be like, shit. You 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 cleared. So do everything you did before you got hurt. You cleared like, to play. Go sense. play ball. It does make sense. You cleared to play, bro. If you can't, if you can't, if you can't, you can no, I'm gonna ease you in, bro. I'm not gonna. If they say you got a bad ankle, I'm not easing you like, in, oh. my, my my guy. Easing you in is a pitch count. That's what that is. Easing you in is a pitch count. Easing easing you in says you're not playing more than twenty snaps. I don't care what you say. You just came off a of said injury. They told so, me you're what you're ready to go. Your pitch yeah. count is twenty reps. After yeah. twenty snaps, and sit your ass on the bench. That's so what I'm that is. Hard, he didn't I'm have a hard pitch count. I'm running you hard as you normally for would. For them 20 plays, it. for them 20 plays, you're functioning in your normal position and we're easing you in. You have a pitch count of 20 plays. After 20 plays, sit on the bench. All right. And I understand now why you're not an NFL coach. Who, me? Yeah, man, because that's not good. That's not that's not a good philosophy. Nah, though. what you're trying to do, what, what you're trying no, to no, do. No, my player's hurt. If, my player yeah, if your player injury, is that hurt, he shouldn't be on the game. He shouldn't be on the field. He's coming off an of, he's coming off an of injury. When Ray Lewis couldn't I, raise his arms, did he have a pitch count? Yes or no? This is what I'm saying. No, you, no, you no. Know, answer that question know. for me. When Ray Probably, Lewis, when you know, Ray, I mean, when Ray Lewis couldn't raise his arms, did he have a pitch count? Yes Probably or no? So. He did not. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you he did not. Ray Lewis shot his fucking shoulder up or pick up, whatever it was, it was fucked up. He used yeah. the deer on the shit, the the spray shit that was uh in question, and okay. he went out there and he couldn't wrap up. So instead of not wrapping up, he just molly-whopped niggas. 
That's not a skill position. He did not have a. What you mean? He played Mike linebacker. He covered from sideline to sideline and yeah, drop back in coverage. He if couldn't he raise one of his arms. So he was batting him down, exactly. my nigga. So, if, so I'm saying with it the, ain't with no the different. Arm, Ronnie Lott cut his finger off. Ain't no different, bro. That wasn't during the game. Anyway, no, he cut his <laughs> finger off. No, no, none of this happened during the game. I know, but what I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. If I'm a coach and I know my player has an injury, the first thing I do is going to ask, well, what is the injury? Is it an ankle? Is it shoulder? Is there it was finger? no, you didn't have to ask the question. You know what he was injured from. You already know what it was, right? So if I listen, know what it, see, uh, and this is what I'm saying. No, uh, no, bro. Uh, you can't be for this nigga, bro. No. At the end of the day, the coach at the end of no, I'm not gonna let you finish because you're on this bullshit. At the end of the day, I ain't finished, bro. nah, bro, because you're on this go bullshit. Go at ahead, end, go no, ahead, go ahead. At the end of the day, he was clear to play. If I mean nothing, any, bro. it, it I mean means nothing, everything man. in the world, bro. At the end of the day, he was clear to play. If at any point in this game he felt like he couldn't go, he yeah. st- he should have told the coach he couldn't go. That's what he did. And then he should have went and then he should have went. And checked in with the medical staff. Now, if the coach had an issue with him saying he couldn't go, huh? Bro, when he said when he said I can't go, and you tell him got the fuck out the field, like he's like that part is what they both agreed on. They said he said he can't go. He said he wasn't going, and he said you got the fuck out the field. He said they agree on that part. So there wasn't no point where he's like you can't go. Go to the medical staff. There wasn't no part where he said he said I can't go. He said get the fuck off my field. Well, or you, you see, and that's and that's where you didn't listen to what I said because I said from the get go, it's a problem if a player tells his coach I can't go, and that yeah. coach's response is get the fuck off my field. That's the only part they both agreed on. You missed that whole part where I said that's a problem. I ain't missed nothing. I'm saying I said that. if Bruce Arians, saying, I said I said if Bruce Arians' response to coach I can't go, and you know your player has had a, a injury, is get the fuck off my field. Yeah, that's a problem. That's I've, a, I've and, been said that. Yeah, and well, I agree with you. But I'm saying that the part about checking with the staff that makes sense. But we ain't got to that. We can't even get to that point because when, when I tell you what's going on, you say I'm a liar. Bro, you a 10-plus vet. You a 10-plus year vet in this league, bro. If this man call you a liar and you already know how – and and A.B. is self-aware, so he knows what light he's seen in this in in this game. Bro, hey, you know what? Bet you told me to get off your field. All right, that's what's up. Let me walk to the sideline. Hey, yo, medical staff, my ankle fucked up. I don't care if he's not fucked up. Hey, yo, medical staff, my ankle fucked up. And, and like I said last pod, I'm going to milk the shit out that hoe. Nigga, I'm finna find some crutches. We finna limp off this hoe. Mike Evans helped me to the locker room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to do, I, I, I'm not gonna do I, I that. Agree. I agree, but I agree with what you're saying. What else I'm saying is that the fact that he doesn't care about the next move is the part that I can't really not be happy with, man, because like, that is the exit that everybody like. I know you've nah, seen that ain't worse the exit. Ex- that everybody would do, bro. No, 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 no. I know you've seen worse exits to people getting fired. And like, I, that, some clown shit to me. It is. What I'm saying is like, there's different ways to get fired, right? He decided I'm fired. Then shit, I'm gonna go out like a fool, man. I'm gonna. That's I'm the problem. And that mind state, that mindset is the problem. How many teams? Wow. How, how many teams in the NFL? How many? Thirty-two. How many? It's thirty-two. So yeah. you've alienated. You can't go back to Pittsburgh. You can't go to New England. Okay. So it's thirty teams that you still can play for. All right, twenty-nine. Because now, once yeah. I make this exit, I can't play for the Bucks. So or, or probably the Raiders. That's, that's or the Raiders. My bad. So it's twenty-eight teams that you're still eligible to play for. Yeah. So if I'm a business and it's my brand, and I know I'm hurt. And I yeah. still want to play a couple more years for whatever reasons. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to do that because after doing that, I, I I definitely can't go play for these other 28 teams. I mean, maybe he, I can't. he can. Huh? But look, look, look. It, se- it, it seemed oh, like, it seemed like he did all this shit to be a SoundCloud rapper. That's what it seemed like. That's what they said about him in, in Pittsburgh. That's what they said about him in, 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 in Oakland. That's what they said about him with New England. Yeah, it's only so many times you can burn that bridge, though. 
What you mean? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't did it four times, man. So, oh, so it's cool to burn bridges. I can just burn bro, bridges. Well, how's he burn bridges, bro? If he keep coming back, what you uh, do? You think he, Do you really think AB is going to play for another team? Who thought he was coming back from Pittsburgh? Nobody. Well, well, it wasn't that egregious in Pittsburgh. So, at the, the of, at the end of the day, what, what, hold on, what, what about the Raiders? At the end of the day. No one answer that question. No, listen, no, it, it uh, well, if you, let me if, you, if you let me finish, I'm proving you. I'm, I'm answering the question. Yeah. Yeah, you're proving my point. I'm not proving your point at all. In Pittsburgh, he wanted more money. So he did the okay. same thing Le'Veon Bell did. Okay. He held out. He got paid by the Raiders. And then for whatever reason, he didn't like the situation he was in and, and, and with the Raiders. He mm -hmm. got cut. And yeah. now he started playing for incentive-laded contracts. Once did he, he play, left the Raiders. No, no, did, did he play again? For for the Patriots, but not really. How many games did he play for the Patriots? He you, played you, by Patriots. Ask me how many how many games he suited up for the Patriots. Important, bro. Did he get? It is it's very game? important because he, he did not. not important. He did not get paid. He did not get paid by the Patriots. That's what I'm saying. When he left the Raiders, the word was he not getting nobody. Who he wants played him? one nobody. game for the Patriots and then he had some domestic abuse bullshit and he didn't play for the rest of the season. Correct. Well, right. But did he? Get Am I correct? Dollars? Just to know. Did, Yes, but they get picked up by the Patriots after the Raiders. Yes or no? Yes. Well, he got cut he, by the Raiders and they picked him up. No one said he wouldn't play. No one. Get listen, to what by the Bucks? listen to what I'm saying. Nobody said he wouldn't play again after he got cut by the Raiders. He, Why not? Yes, it was. Nobody That's said not, he wouldn't play again. No one said that. That was the word. That was not the word at all. After Pittsburgh, they was like, "Will he play again?" After the Raiders, they said, "No one Raiders said, turn. will he play again?" After the Raiders, he got picked up by Pitt, by, by the um by the by the by the Patriots. The only reason why he got cut by the Patriots is because he has some off the field domestic violence situation so issues. You're telling you're going to tell me with a straight face that when he got the domestic violence things with the with with the Patriots, people were like, "Yeah, he gonna come back next year." No, the only reason why he had a job the year after that is because Tom Brady was in it was was with the Bucks, and who, Tom Brady, who wanted A. B. in New England, said, "I want him in Tampa." What I'm saying is, no this. other team wanted to pick him up. It Tom matter. Brady wanted him it in Tampa. It doesn't matter. It does matter because how does, how does it matter? Thirty two back, teams. Did he up again? Thirty two teams. Did he get up again? Thirty two teams. Did he get up see, again? and that's where you don't want to listen. It and don't you, matter about the up there, too, man. It, do, it does matter. Didn't happen. I'll tell you what did happen. It does matter. The climate matters. because yeah. Did he get picked up again and get a Super Bowl of ring? Of course he got picked up, and he got a ring, no, I, and he didn't so get a what? ring because of him. The ring wasn't matter. because of A.B. <laughs> oh, well, you who say championships don't qualify anything, now you're qualifying him coming back with a ring. What I'm saying is the only reason why he was playing in Tampa was because the person who wanted him in New England went to Tampa and vouch okay. for him in Tampa. Okay. Out of 32 teams. That might be true. Oh, listen to what I'm saying. No, listen to what I'm saying. Out of 32 teams, only one person was vouching for him. Yeah. And that was Tom Brady in Tampa. Now, now you've burnt that bridge and you can't yeah. come back. Who's going to go vouch for him now? Tell me that. Who are you going to play for now? So, so what? Who what is, is he going to play for now? AB probably know. has at least three good seasons left. Who are we going to play okay. for now? You think you think the whole league gonna be like, yeah, I'd rather just not have one of the best receivers ever on my team. He's not gonna play again, bro. I asked you a question. You think the whole league one hundred percent? I don't want to deal many, with the head case. How many times T.O. came back? T.O. is not the head. First off, I asked you a question. First just off, question. T.O. T.O. never did any of this. I didn't Tell ask me what T.O. Did. did was that? I didn't ask you what he Tell did. Me, no, no, no. That matters. Back. That matters. I, Matter, the character bro. of the player matters. T.O. No, never did anything like this. It does not like matter, this. man. It does matter. It's the character like, of the player matters. If the character of the player matter, he wouldn't have got to pass the Steelers, bro. What are you talking about? If the character of the player mattered, after he pulled the stunt, he pulled the Steelers and went to the Raiders and pulled what the did he do that was that egregious? What did he do that was that egregious in Pittsburgh outside of saying, I'm worth more than what you're paying me? He, he, he sat out the whole year, bro. Le'Veon Bell did the same thing. That's not a character issue. That's I'm sitting out because I want to get paid my worth. Okay, and then back so that's not a character issue. Okay, and what about the Raiders? The Raiders was a character issue. He found okay, a reason about, why he didn't about, want he, he didn't New want to England? play for LA. What about New England? Oh, New England was a character issue because he he okay. low key almost beat his so, baby mama off the field. So once again, you talking about three 
if it's three instances, two out of three of them were character. He got picked up again after that. It don't matter. He only got picked up again because the one person that vouched for him in New England not happened matter. to be playing in Tampa Bay. It does matter. Context matters. It matter. It the, does matter. Context matters because what I'm saying is like the this. person who wanted him in New England, they got him on the team, and then he got cut because of his off the field discretions. Is the same person who wanted him in Tampa Bay, and now he got cut again because of his off the field and on the field discretions. So what you're saying is. That he he ain't playing again, not playing again. Okay, well, no time will tell. We'll see. I say gonna play again. And To and Ab are two different players. I agree, but will he play again? Yeah, one, yeah. one, you're talking about a Hall of Fame receiver who necessarily <gasps> To ain't do shit off the field wrong. At the end of the day, the only thing To is really is is really guilty of is maybe being a diva and even T.O. in Dallas he didn't tell a lie T.O. in Philly didn't tell a lie he just I'm, clashed he just clashed with the franchise quarterback and between the franchise quarterback and franchise receiver you're gonna pick the quarterback all the I'm the saying day. all I'm saying is that T.O. is a first was a first round Hall of Famer First ballot, first ballot Hall of Famer that got black Bob because he didn't fuck with the media, because of how somebody felt about him. Because he he didn't fuck with the media. Because yeah, because some because now To didn't do anything. To and Ab are two different cases. To is nowhere near the cancer in the locker room that Ab is. Ab is is one of the most productive receivers of all time. Ab Ab should be a Hall of Famer, but he can't get out his own way. Should be a first. Regardless of anything happening off the field or even on the field, his numbers are amongst the greatest in, of all time. Couldn't pay me to put AB on my team. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't pay me to still, have AB on my team. Yet and still, the teams that he's been on have always been successful. Not Whenever solely because play, of him. Tampa Bay is 7 0 with AB on the field this year. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Tampa Bay, a, Tampa Bay would have won a ring regardless with AB last year, whether he's on his field or not. That's your opinion, but I'm just saying. Was he a was he a factor in them ring, winning a ring last year? Yes, he scored a touchdown. But was he a factor? Did he did was he a minus or a plus? He's a plus, so he's a factor. Yes. Was he the factor? Was he the X factor? Well, so now you can qualify. I'm asking, was he really. X factor? Yes, he was, he was the X factor. So A B was the X factor, and why they won a championship last season, bro? On offense. So Tom Brady not the goat. Gronk ain't the goat. The uh, 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 Leonard Fournette had nothing to do with it. It was all AB. Once again, you can. I'm asking, double-team. was it all AB? I didn't say that. But he's Mike a, Evans he, had nothing to do with it. I didn't say that. You said that. I'm saying. I'm that, asking, was he the X factor? And I didn't say anything. So stop trying to put X words factor, in my mouth. Stop trying factor. to say I said X, Y, and Z. I'm asking you, was AB the X factor, and when they won, and why? Why they won a championship last season? Yes or no? The, yes. The so, so he was the X factor. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. The X AB factor was the X factor last season. The, the X factor does not mean the main player. AB was the, the X factor last season. Yes or no? The X factor. Okay, yes or no? I don't. I don't want you to give me the definition of it. We all know the definition of it. Okay. Was AB was the, the X was, factor last season? It's a yes was, or no. Definition of an X factor. It's a yes without, or no. We don't need the definition. Yes. We know it. Without him, without him, we can double team Gronk. You're we delusional. Team Mike as, Evans. You are delusional as fuck. So you me was not the X factor last year. Fuck no. It, without they AB, we, the with, Tampa with Bay, playing, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would have won a championship last year if you were running routes for them in AB spot. No, I'm not because they they can't they okay. Do you, you know the weapons that? they had on their team last year? That's what I'm trying to say, bro. Do you That's know the say. weapons they had? So can you double team four players? My nigga, if I got Gronk, Leonard Fournette, and Mike Evans on the field at the same time with the little uh, receiver they had that wasn't Antonio Brown on the field. So I, I, I got double team they Gronk. Still, oh, they still would have won. I got double team Gronk, Gronk, right? You don't have to. Oh, if I don't, what's going to happen? You better double team Mike Evans. Okay, if I double team, I, don't, I got to double team him. I got to have his man and help on top. I can't I double gotta, team Mike Evans and Gronk, and then not worry about my backs in the backfield. And, and I got and I got AB. AB was, was just really icing on the cake, bro. 
it, that's what the X factor is, bro. Icing on the cake is the no, 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 no. The yeah. X factor is not the, the X factor is the person who is unguardable. No, okay. The X factor is the person that you have to that you that you, that you have the game plan for. I'm not game planning for AB. I'm game planning for Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the X factor on the squad, bro. I you can't tell me the person who y'all are saying. You can't tell me the person who y'all are saying is the goat is not the X factor. So you're wrong. A B on that team last season was not the X factor. Now, if you just want to cape for A B and say he's the X factor, whatever, he was not. They would have won that championship with A A B or without A B. So let's not let's not do that. Am I saying that A B is a general? I'm not saying that Antonio Brown is not a generational talent. Antonio Brown definitely 100% is a generational talent. But don't sit here and try to tell me that Antonio Brown was the X factor and the reason why they won a Super Bowl last year. Don't sit here and tell me that 28 other teams will deal with AB's bullshit next season because they won't. And I'm done with AB. What you got next? We'll see. I ain't got nothing else, man. It's been a long day. Eyes of bloodshot red. I'm having audio issues. You have, because your audio know you full of shit. So <laughs> this has been another entertaining episode of the 16 Shots Podcast where Young James Boogie, AR Dub, will be right back here tomorrow for our normal Sunday show. And I guarantee you, we will not talk about A B. <laughs> We don't have any guests tomorrow, man. You ain't got to tell us the guests. But we don't uh, have any guests I don't know. tomorrow. I might. Um, hey, man, I we got to have a wild fire show tomorrow. We got to. We really got to be fired. I feel like in 2022, at least one show a week, we got to aim to go viral. <laughs> um, we got a spot to record at, man. I mean, uh, my, my guy opened up a footy bar right there on uh, on uh, on North. North Durham and uh, Larkin in the Heights. Word. Well, we got to yeah, make he, sure we... He said, uh, he said anytime we come in and record, you know, I'm probably I'm probably going to have him on probably uh, tomorrow or uh, next week, but uh, he got a full, he got a lot of life. So he even had a bunch of celebrities come through, Jamie Foxx, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson or whatever. Dr. Umar Johnson, hey man, if we ain't been through that, ain't no celebrities been through that. So... Yeah, we'll set a date. Third war, you know we'll do saying? a live show. We'll see what happens. First live show, we'll go through there, and we'll make it happen, bro. So you know, that's a bet. Hey, sixteen shots podcast, Young James Boogie, Ar Dub, and we are out. Hey, hey.